Hello and welcome to day 309 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now and share this broadcast with your friends, family and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles today. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and for the opportunity to draw closer to you through your word today, the 309th day of our Bible journey. We come before you with open hearts, eager to learn, grow, and be transformed by your truth. As we read today's scriptures, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us, opening our eyes to see the lessons you have for us. Lord, fill us with understanding and give us wisdom to apply what we learn in our lives. Help us to hear your voice to walk in obedience and to grow in faith and love. May your word bring encouragement, correction and strength to our hearts as we seek to follow you more closely. We commit this time to you trusting in your presence and your peace. Thank you for your faithfulness and for the life-changing power of your word. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Day 309, November 5th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading Old Testament, Ezekiel 7, 8, and 9. New Testament, Hebrews 6, 13 to 20, and Hebrews 7, 1 to 10. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 119, verse 161 to 168 Old Testament NIV version Ezekiel 7 1 to 27 The end has come The word of the Lord came to me Son of man this is what the sovereign Lord says to the land of Israel The end The end has come upon the four corners of the land The end is now upon you and I will unleash my anger against you I will judge you according to your conduct and repay you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity. I will not spare you. I will surely repay you for your conduct and for the detestable practices among you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Disaster. Unheard of disaster. See, it comes. The end has come. The end has come. It has roused itself against you. See, it comes. Doom has come upon you. Upon you will dwell in the land. The time has come. The day is near. There is panic, not joy, on the mountains. I am about to pour out my wrath on you and spend my anger against you. I will judge you according to your conduct and repay you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity. I will not spare you. I will repay you for your conduct and for the detestable practices among you. Then you will know that it is I, the Lord, who strikes you. See the day. See, it comes. Doom has burst forth. The rod has budded. Arrogance has blossomed. Violence has arisen. A rod to punish the wicked. None of the people will be left, none of that crowd, none of their wealth, nothing of value. The time has come, the day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller grieve, for my wrath is on the whole crowd. The seller will not recover the property that was sold, as long as both buyer and seller live. For the vision concerning the whole crowd will not be reversed because of their sins. Not one of them will preserve their life. They have blown the trumpet. They have made all things ready, but no one will go into battle. For my wrath is on the whole crowd. 
Outside is the sword, inside are plague and famine. Those in the country will die by the sword. Those in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. The fugitives who escape will flee to the mountains like doves of the valleys. They will all mourn each for their own sins. Every hand will go limp, every leg will be wet with urine. They will put on sackcloth and be clothed with terror. Every face will be covered with shame and every head will be shaved. They will throw their silver into the streets and their gold will be treated as a thing unclean. Their silver and gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs, for it has caused them to stumble into sin. They took pride in their beautiful jewelry and used it to make their detestable idols. They made it into vile images. Therefore, I will make it a thing unclean for them. I will give their wealth as plunder to foreigners and as loot to the wicked of the earth who will defile it. I will turn my face away from the people and robbers will desecrate the place I treasure. They will enter it and will defile it. Prepare chains for the land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of violence. I will bring the most wicked of nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to the pride of the mighty and their sanctuaries will be desecrated. When terror comes, they will seek peace in vain. Calamity upon calamity will come and rumor upon rumor. They will go searching for a vision from the prophet. Priestly instruction in the law will cease. The counsel of the elders will come to an end. The king will mourn the prince will be clothed with despair and the hands of the people of the land will tremble. I will deal with them according to their conduct and by their own standards I will judge them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 8, 1-18 idolatry in the temple in the sixth year in the sixth month on the fifth day while i was sitting in my house and the elders of judah were sitting before me the hand of the sovereign lord came on me there i looked and i saw a figure like that of a man from what appeared to be his waist down he was like fire and from there up his appearance was as bright as glowing metal he stretched out what looked like a hand and took me by the hair of my head. The Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and in visions of God, he took me to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the north gate of the inner court, where the idol that provokes to jealousy stood, and there before me was the glory of the God of Israel, as in the vision I had seen in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, Look toward the north. So I looked and in the entrance north of the gate of the altar, I saw this idol of jealousy. And he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The utterly detestable things the Israelites are doing here, things that will drive me far from my sanctuary, but you will see things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance to the court. I looked and I saw a hole in the wall, he said to me, Son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and saw a doorway there. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked and detestable things they are doing there. So I went in and looked, and I saw portrayed all over the walls all kinds of crawling things and unclean animals and all the idols of Israel. In front of them stood seventy elders of Israel and Jazaniah son of Shaphan, who was standing among them. Each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of Israel are doing in the darkness, each at the shrine of his own idol? They say, The Lord does not see us, the Lord has forsaken the land. Again he said, you will see them doing things that are even more detestable. Then 
he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord, and I saw women sitting there, mourning the god Tammuz. He said to me, Do you see this, son of man? You will see things that are even more detestable than these. He then brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord, and there at the entrance to the temple, between the portico and the altar, there were about 25 men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. They were bowing down to the sun in the east. He said to me, Have you seen this, son of man? Is it a trivial matter for the people of Judah to do the detestable things they are doing here? Must they also fill the land with violence and continually arouse my anger? Look at them putting the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will deal with them in anger. I will not look on them with pity or spare them. Although they shout in my ears, I will not listen to them. Ezekiel 9, 1-11 judgment on the idolaters then i heard him call out in a loud voice bring ye those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city each with a weapon in his hand and i saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate which faces north each with a deadly weapon in his hand with them was a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side they came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now, the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim, where it had been, and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreskins of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter the old men, the young men and women, the mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So, so they began with the old men who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing and I was left alone, I fell face down, crying out, Alas, sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? He answered me, The sin of the people of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They say the Lord has forsaken the land. The Lord does not see. So I will not look on them with pity or spare them, but I will bring down on their own heads what they have done. Then the man in linen with the writing kit at his side brought back word saying, I have done as you commanded. New Testament NIV version Hebrews six thirteen to 20 the certainty of God's promise. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. 
Hebrews 7, 1 to 10. Melchizedek the priest. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also, king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without being of, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. Now, the law requires the descendants of Levi who become priests to collect a tenth from the people, that is, from their fellow Israelites, even though they also are descended from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. In the one case, the tenth is collected by people who die, but in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. One might even say that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestor. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 119, verse 161 to 168. Sin and Shin. Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace. Have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. Amen. Lessons learned from the Old Testament verses, Ezekiel 7. Persistent sin leads to unavoidable judgment and God's patience has limits. In this chapter, God declares an end to Jerusalem's sinfulness as his judgment is set to come upon them. The lesson here is that a life turned away from God leads to consequences and there comes a time when ignoring God's commands brings unavoidable repercussions. This passage reminds us to live with a heart of repentance, understanding that God's desire is to restore us, but persistent rebellion leads to judgment. Ezekiel 8 God sees all things, including hidden sins, and he calls us to worship him with a pure heart. Ezekiel's vision reveals the hidden idolatry and corruption within the temple, showing that nothing is hidden from God. The lesson here is that God sees our hearts and our actions, even those hidden from others. He desires sincere worship, free from idols or anything that takes his rightful place in our lives. We are called to approach him with purity and sincerity, honoring him above all else. Lessons learned from Ezekiel 9. God protects those who remain faithful, even in times of judgment. In this chapter, God instructs a mark to be placed on those who mourn over the sins of the city, sparing them from judgment. The lesson here is that God sees and values those who are faithful to him even amid widespread corruption. God's protection and mercy are extended to those who seek him sincerely and stand against sin, reminding us to remain steadfast in our faith regardless of our surroundings. Lessons learned from the New Testament verses, Hebrews 6, 13-20. God's promises are trustworthy, giving us hope and security in all circumstances. This passage highlights God's unchanging nature, emphasizing that he fulfills his promises. The lesson here is that we can rely on God's faithfulness as his promises provide a secure foundation and are an anchor for the soul. 
In moments of uncertainty, we are encouraged to hold firmly to the hope found in God, trusting that He will fulfill what He has promised. Hebrews 7, 1-10 Jesus, as our eternal High Priest, is the source of eternal blessing. The writer of Hebrews draws a parallel between Melchizedek, who blessed Abraham, and Jesus, our High Priest, who brings us into a blessed relationship with God. The lesson here is that, through Jesus, we have a High Priest who is perfect, eternal, and sufficient for our every need. Jesus intercedes for us and brings us into God's presence, providing us with both spiritual blessing and eternal hope. Lessons learned from Psalm 119 verse 161 to 168. Loving God's word brings peace and stability, even in challenging times. The psalmist expresses deep trust and love for God's commandments, which keep him grounded despite opposition and difficulty. The lesson here is that when we hold fast to God's word, it fills us with peace, love, and resilience, no matter what we face. God's commands guide us in truth and provide a sense of security, giving us a foundation of joy and confidence. These lessons emphasize the importance of repentance, sincerity in worship, faithfulness amid corruption, trust in God's promises, and the blessing of Christ's priesthood. By anchoring ourselves in God's word and promises, we find peace, protection, and a deepened relationship with Him. Faith Declarations from Ezekiel 7, 8, and 9 I choose to live in obedience to God, recognizing that persistent sin leads to judgment. I confess that I will not ignore God's commands, but I will walk in humility and repentance. I commit to seeking His guidance daily, knowing that His desire is to restore me and lead me on the right path. Dear God, I know that you see my heart and every hidden part of my life. I confess any idols or distractions that have taken priority over you, and I turn away from them now. I desire to worship you, Lord, with a pure heart, honoring you as Lord over every area of my life. You alone are worthy of my devotion. I will remain faithful to you, God, even in a world filled with compromise. I trust that, dear God, you see my heart and will protect me as I stand firm in faith. I confess that I am devoted to you and I find my strength in your presence, knowing that you mark those who seek you sincerely. Faith declarations from Hebrews six thirteen to twenty and Hebrews seven one to ten. I hold firmly to the promises of God, knowing that He is faithful and unchanging. I declare that His promises are my anchor, giving me hope and security. I confess that I will not waver in my faith, trusting in the God who always fulfills what He has promised. I find peace in His unshakable word and I draw strength from his unwavering faithfulness. I am grateful for Jesus, my eternal High Priest, who intercedes on my behalf. I declare that through him I have access to every spiritual blessing and a relationship with God that is secure and eternal. I confess that I am blessed to know Jesus who is perfect, holy, and always present guiding me and filling me with hope. Faith Declarations from Psalm 119 verse 161 to 168 I love God's word and it is my foundation and peace. I declare that his commandments give me strength, stability and joy even when I face opposition. I confess that I will hold tightly to his truth, finding delight in his guidance. I trust that, as I live according to his word, I am walking in love, security, 
and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are super excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now, send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to share this broadcast with your friends, family, and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles every day. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.